about time. What's going on? Yo. Yo. Rumor report. Rumor report. This is the rumor report. Talk to him. With Angela Yee on the Breakfast Club. Yes, Javante Davis is talking about fighting. He wants to do a live fight again. And he said he's only speaking for himself as a fighter. Listen to what he had to say. I'm okay with getting sick to please the fans. If I got sick and I found out that night, I'd be okay with just just knowing that I put on a great show. I did it in front of the fans. I did it for a cause. You know, so yeah. if I if I got to take that hit, then, you know, I'll call team by myself. I mean, I understand he wants to fight. I understand he wants to get things back to normal, but he has to know that it's not safe. I mean, unless they can, you know, properly socially distance and maybe everybody sits six feet away, but it's it's going to be very difficult. It can happen, I guess, if they do 25% of the arena, but you don't want people Well, to he it. is fighting on Halloween, by the way. Yeah, is, so but they're not going to allow people in, in the arena, though, right? Uh, it's going to be a live crowd. Really? Mm-hmm. Wow. And, yeah, it's a little nerve-wracking, right? Yeah, I mean, but I've seen people all kinds of places, so I'm not sure what they're doing there. If they're gonna, you know, socially distance or how it's gonna go down. But he's doing a fight, and he doesn't mind if he gets coronavirus or gets sick, as long as his fans have a good show. And I, I'm not gonna lie, like I see people going to these football games, and it's only about twenty, twenty five percent, and people are spread out, they're spread apart. I'm like, I, I kind of want to go, but my that's also outdoors. Thing. Two mostly, right? And yeah. a lot bigger. Yeah, outdoors. Yeah, so I don't know. And look, uh, for Javante, it's not even just about you getting sick, though, because people who come to your fight could get sick. Correct. So, yeah. All right, now let's talk about t Uh She was doing an interview with Hollywood Unlocked, and she talked about feeling like the industry turned their backs on TLC after Left Eye passed. Here's what she had to say. Honestly, when Lisa died, the whole industry turned on us. Everybody, L.A. Reed, mm. I'll, I'll call them all out. I don't care. L.A., everybody. Then the artists, I remember the one who said, yeah, it was VH1, Super Bowl Blitz. That concert was the most stressful, hectic concert. Um, Nelly was supposed to open. He's on a plane. As soon as he landed, and we have a police escort, he's like, I got to get my hair cut. <laughs> like, Drake. He pulled out. We had just did his OVO fest. He was like, oh, no, I'm working on my performance. T.I., everybody. I mean, that sounded now, crazy. that's stressful. Imagine you have a concert, and then Nelly and Drake, who are supposed to co-perform with you, pull out of the concert. Yeah, that sounds crazy. The last especially, especially if they just did the uh, OVO festival a couple of days before, and you expected him to come. And I'm surprised Nelly pulled out because he didn't get a haircut, she said. That doesn't sound like Nelly. I mean, I'm sure at some point Nelly's going to tell his side of the story to say what happened. But that's an awful feeling. Like, you feel like people ain't got your backs. They don't know what's going to happen. And you just lost one of the members of your group. And you're trying to keep it together. Yeah, it's a horrible feeling. Yeah, I would love to hear from Nelly. She said Nelly, T.I., and Drake. I mean, Drake, it just, it just all seems weird to me. Like and I said, because Drake just had him at the OVO Festival. Nelly is that type of dude. Nelly's a stand-up dude, so I can't see Nelly saying, I ain't get a haircut, so I ain't going. That just sounds crazy. Right, he saved your life. He did. Yeah, so I can't see that happening. Mm -hmm. All right, now Louis Vuitton has unveiled their uh, NBA capsule collection that Virgil actually did under the artistic direction of Virgil. Did you have a chance to see it? Yeah, I did see some of it. What did you think of the Louis Vuitton NBA collection? Um, it was it was okay. Um, some of the stuff that Louis Vuitton doing is a little extra and a little over the top and very expensive. I ain't gonna lie. There's this uh, blue jacket that looks kind of amazing. I like it. Okay. If you have a chance, like a leather jacket. I'm Go not going to get anything. Money. I'm just, I'm not spending no money. I'm just saying it looks nice. That's all. I don't know how much it costs. <laughs> yeah, now the bag is dope. If you're a basketball player, you could carry your bag in a Louis Vuitton bag. But the problem is, is you're not going to take that bag to the park, you know? But yeah, hey, the Louis Vuitton jacket is dope. Some of the stuff that they have is dope. They have a whole box that holds a trophy. Why would you need that unless you were a ball player, I guess? Yeah, this is for the ball players. That, that that's something that that LeBron will buy. Yeah, <laughs> Michael Jordan, you know, people like that. <laughs> All right, now Logic has bought something for a quarter million dollars, and he bought a Pokemon card. I don't know anything about these cards, but apparently, uh, he spent over two hundred thousand dollars on a very rare Pokemon card. Which, by the way, one of our producers, Dan, said he actually owns that card as well from back in nineteen ninety nine or something. Is it in good condition, Dan? I'll give you a dollar for it right now. No, it's definitely not in the condition Logic paid for it. Oh, damn. I know. Is it? So what could you get for yours? Honestly, I have no idea. I got to talk to Gary V. Well, give it to me and, and let <laughs> me figure it out. Nope. 
I got it. Yeah. Well, Logic said on Instagram, when I was a kid, I absolutely loved Pokemon, but couldn't afford the cards. I remember even trying to trade food stamps for theirs. And now as an adult who has saved every penny he has made being able to enjoy something that I've loved since childhood, now as a grown man, it's like buying back a piece of something I could never have. It's not about the material. It's about the experience. I get it. I understand. That's the reason why I think I love cars the way I love cars. Because as a kid, I couldn't afford it. And I always wanted certain cars. I would always see the drug dealers driving the dope cars. And when I got a little older and I was able to afford it, I bought it. My wife hates it, though. But, and I know, said a Pokemon card, not car. I know. I'm just telling you how I feel about <laughs> how he feels about his card. I feel about my cars. That's why I buy them old 88 BMWs and 91. Because, you know, when I was a child, I couldn't afford it. All right. Well, that is your rumor report. I'm Angela Yee.